What's going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you another quick episode of Breeders Hacks. So today, we're going to be talking about shipped semen. Um, whether you got a breeding coming up, you're expecting semen to be shipped to you, um, a little bit of the process, what to expect, things like that. So stay tuned. <laughs> So as you should know, you know, you should never allow distance to dictate um, a breeding or not. You know what I'm saying? Um, the goal in dog breeding period is putting together the best possible breedings. So sometimes distance can play a factor though, you know? So the key thing um, with that being said is if you have a stud that you want to breed to that's far away, um, you know, and you feel like this is the best stud for you, you know, um, you're gonna need the semen shipped, you know? Um, a lot of stud owners, like for us, for example, you know, a lot of our studs, it's 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 very difficult, you know? Um, it would be impossible to try to meet every single person to do their breeding, you know? Um, we do get a lot of people that come do their breedings in person, but some people, for whatever the reason may be, may not be able to travel that far, you know? Um, so they wanna do the, their best possible breedings, possible period, you know? So. Um, this has been really the solution to that. So now we're shipping semen, right? So um, a lot of people, and I get this question a lot, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, hey, I'm doing a breeding, the guy's shipping semen, like, what do I expect? You know, like, what do I do? I've never done this before. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys a quick, you know, walk through and a little bit of explanation on certain things and whatnot. So to start, right? The stud owner is going to, I've already done an episode on this and it's about um, dog breeding etiquette. You're gonna let the stud owner know what the progesterone numbers are. You know, that's gonna be a key thing, especially when you're gonna be breeding from far away. You know, you're not gonna wanna have him ship semen and you're gonna do the breeding on the ninth day, 11th day, 13th day. You wanna make sure you're hitting it on the money because he's shipping the semen and even just shipping semen alone can be costly, it can be a couple hundred bucks, you know? So, hey. Sorry guys, don't mind the dogs. Yet again, they, like, they do whatever. They don't care when I'm shooting a video. <laughs> but um, anyway guys, so this is more than likely what it's gonna get shipped in, right? So um, like I said, I got a video on progesterone timing. I got a video on, you know, letting know that the stud owner should, you know, you should be doing your breeding when and things like that. So anyway, so you contact the stud owner, you say, hey, look, you know, um, it looks like her numbers are a 12. Um, for example, this is just an example. Her numbers are like a 12, for example. Can you ship the semen for tomorrow? So you, um, you know, you've been in contact with the stud owner. He knows what's going on. He was already expecting it. He's gonna go ahead and pack up the semen for that day, so it gets to you the following day. You know. So um, with that being said, you know it's the following day. This is what you can expect, right? Now some stud owners will not ship it directly to you. Some of them will say, "Hey, we're gonna send it to your vet." Um, some, some stud owners can be, you know, rather picky. They'll say, Hey, you need to do a surgical with this. You only have one shot. That's it. Um, some stud owners are like, Hey, that's cool. You could do an AI with it, whatever. So, but essentially this is going to be the collection, right? So it's going to come more than likely. Most breeders use these boxes. That's why I'm using this for an example. It's a canine express box, right? So this is what they look like. It says canine express on the side. Um, we have our own, um, shipping containers that we use. Um, but time to time, I'll use one of these. I actually just had to use one of these for breeding in um, Georgia. So anyway, when you receive the box, right, this is what it's gonna look like. So if you can see, it's gonna have this styrofoam box on the inside. So this box is just the shipping part, you know? So we can get rid of this. And this is what's gonna be on the inside, right? It's gonna look like a cooler. So inside of it, it'll be more than likely an ice pack. There should be an ice pack. You've got a problem if you don't have an ice pack. But there's gonna be an ice pack like this on the inside. You'll have a, a piece dividing it. And then on the bottom, you'll have like some styrofoam container and this tube will have your collection. Depending on the stud dog, um, the breeder may send you two of these, you know, and be like, hey, you know what? You might be able to get two breedings in. 
Um, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going ahead to take this. And now this is the biggest question I get people that ask me and they say, hey, I have my centrifuge tube. What do I do in preparation of, you know, inseminating my female with this, you know, uh, chilled collection? And I tell people, and, and this is really the answer, nothing. Put it in the syringe and throw it in the female, you know? Um, surprisingly, I, like I said, I get a lot of questions and people think, how do, how do I properly throw it out? Things like that. Um, I mean, you could put, um, you could put like a, a room temperature, um, water and put this container in it, but I don't do any of that. What I just do is I go ahead and load it up in my syringe. And for you guys that know, you know, we use the, the three way AI kits, you know, so I'll go ahead and load it up in my syringe and it's going to thaw inside the female. You know, the female's temperature, you know, is, is more than enough to thaw it out, warm it up, everything like that. So when you think about it to me, that's the best place for it to thaw out is inside the female because once it's once the, the sperm cells wake up, they're already where they need to be, you know, so they'll start swimming right away. So it only makes sense um, why throw it out externally, you know? So like I said, um, that's what we do. The second the collection gets in and I'm ready to do my, my AI, my breeding, whatever the case may be, I'm gonna take this bad boy out put it into my syringe, go ahead and do the AI. That's really it, you know? And if you're going to a vet to do a surgical, then it doesn't matter anyway. So it is all up to you. So um, essentially, if you're doing the breeding and it's a surgical, you know, yet again, same scenario. You're gonna let the stud owner know, hey, this is what her numbers are. He's gonna say, okay, we're gonna ship the box for tomorrow. The, the box will get to your vet the next day. Go ahead, um, bring the dog in. The vet's gonna handle everything for you, as easy as that. And that's a, that's a key thing you need to ask your stud owners, the stud owners, you know, um, am I allowed to do an AI? Does it have to be a surgical? Um, things like that, you know what I'm saying? Because then if it's a surgical, then you know, you give them the vet's address, it goes straight there, the vet's gonna handle everything for you, you know? Um, there's really not much you gotta do. Um, and then when it comes to, uh, like I said, an AI, it's gonna come in like this. I showed you guys what it's gonna look like. You're gonna go ahead and throw it in your, your syringe go ahead and do the AI. And another thing I meant to mention real quick is when the semen comes in, you know, what you'll want to do, um, make sure your vet is checking the semen. Make sure they're putting it under the microscope and you're seeing that the semen is healthy. Um, there's a large count, they're not all dead. Things can happen in transit, you know? Anything can happen, you know? So you want to make sure that the semen is a variable that you don't want to rule out if the breeding doesn't take. So if the breeding doesn't take, you want to make sure the semen was good. You don't have to question that. Um, most vets will check the semen before they even think about doing an AI or um, the surgical. You know, it's super easy. All they gotta do is they're gonna take a syringe, pull a little bit, like a drop out, put it on a microscope slide, put it under the microscope and just take a look and make sure that the semen looks, you know, healthy. Um, I'm gonna do an episode going more in detail on this, but long story short, you know, that the tails, oh, they got, they have tails, they're not broken tails. You know, they're swimming in usually like uh, a straight direction. You know, um, there's a large count, they're not all dead, you know, things like that, you know? So um, if you wanna, if you're getting AI sent to your home, um, you wanna do your own, um, you know, study evaluations and hey, we got the, the microscopes on breedershacks.com. They're great, I love them. The veterinary grade, they work awesome. So anyway, like I was saying, so when the semen comes in, what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do, take, take a look at it, evaluate it, make sure the semen is good. If it's good, then you're good to go, you know? And that's just one thing I want you guys to be mindful of too, is don't just get the semen and throw it in the female because you don't know, you know, if the semen is good. And that's one thing you can check off your list that uh, you, you crossed your T's and dotted your I's when it came to doing your breeding to make sure you did everything possible for it to take, you know? That's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you guys this quick video because I get a lot of questions about people asking me. I've never done the whole process of, um, you know, having semen shipped to me. So like I said, that that's essentially it. You know, so I hope this was helpful. I hope it was useful. I hope this answers y'all questions because I actually went on YouTube and I didn't see a video actually explaining this. So um, I hope that's it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode of Breeders Hacks.